Welcome to Book Marketing Mania. I'm Kim, and I'm so thrilled you're tuning in today as I'm going to share 14 ways you can use audiograms to build your audience and market your books. If you heard last week's episode number 90 with my friend Jeff Dolan, founder of Wave, on how audiograms can be your on-ramps to your content, well, you may be wondering how else could you use audiograms to build your audience and market your book even long before you have the book in hand? And for those of you who don't like to be on video, I gotcha. Audiograms are perfect for those faceless videos. So remember what Jeff said, you know, there's three components to an audiogram. There's your static image, there's your audio clip, and then there's some kind of a moving element on the screen, like a waveform, you know, kind of representing a podcast, or it might be a circle that kind of moves, any kind of movement on the screen. And again, this is to create a social video. Like if you're not going to just hop on and show your face and talk to a video, you want to be able to have something else you can post. And these audio Audiograms are great ways to do that. So I wanted to share how you could use audiograms and give you 14 ideas. So let me just say the first five ideas are going to be related to podcasts, whether you are a podcast host or a podcast guest, but then all the other ways, you don't have to have anything going on with podcasting to benefit from these. Number one way to use audiograms is sharing your guest episodes. So you as a guest on a podcast. This is a great way to share it on social media. So, you know, your image would be your either your podcast logo, or maybe there's a shareable image that the host gave you, or you can create your own in something like Canva. And then your audio is just basically your clip from the episode. So if the host doesn't provide an MP3 file for you, you can create a clip at listennotes.com. That's my favorite place to just pull up an interview, and you can create a clip there and download it. And I'm sure there's lots of other ways too, but that's my favorite way. And then of course, you're going to add some movement on the screen and that makes your audiogram. And remember, Jeff suggested for podcast host, and this can go for guests too, is pull multiple audio clips while you're looking at the file. So if you're a podcast host and you're editing your episode, go ahead and, and you know, proactively pull pull out some really great audio clips that you can use. And if you're a guest, again, while you're listening to the guest episode, you can go ahead and make notes where you said some really great things. And so one of the things that I love to use for this is Otter, O-T-T-E-R, and it's otter.ai, and I'll put a link in the show notes for it. But that's my transcription program that I love using to transcribe things just for this purpose. So I use it for my own podcast, but I also use it when I'm a guest on podcast, or sometimes even when I'm I'm just sneaking around and listening to somebody else's podcast. I'll download it to get some information out there that I can share with my listeners. So I will put all links for those in the show notes. Then number two, use audiograms in your podcast pitch. So let your potential host hear you as a guest on podcast. And I'm going to give credit out to one of my amazing mentors, Angie Trueblood, host of the Go Pitch Yourself podcast. Angie helped me learn how to do podcast pitching, and she is just amazing at it. And one of the things I learned from her was to attach or do a link to a little snippet of you speaking on a podcast. That way a podcast host can hear you. It's one thing for us to say, I've been a guest before on podcast, right? Well, they could take their time and go look it up, but ain't nobody got time for that. So you could give them a link to a sample of you speaking. And of course, you know, the image would be like the podcast logo. I know like what Angie, what we did with when I worked with her agency is we would usually have um, the podcast logo and then in a corner, you know, a picture of, of the guest or vice versa. And we just created, we had a template on Canva that we used, or again, you could just use the image that the host shares with you. And then the audio, of course, is the clip from the interview. And we always pick the best one one right, make the, make you sound as good as possible. And of course, if you've already done idea number one, then you've already got a clip. And then again, you got to add some movement on the screen. Then a third way to use audiograms is to share your guest episodes where you are a host and you have a guest on the show. Because remember, this is evergreen content. So you may have somebody coming on the show to talk about their book that's releasing right now or talk about a variety of topics. But remember, it's evergreen content that's applicable 
forever to new listeners, new followers, you know, and you're always connecting with new people that you want to introduce your show to. So this way, again, if you've pulled clips while you're editing, you can make a variety of audiograms from your guest episodes and be strategic. There might have been something that you interviewed and aired an interview around like the holidays or special events or special days, or maybe there's something, you know, big in the news that you want to tie into your content. You could just make sure you do it then, like make a note when you're editing your episode. Uh, This is a great evergreen content for XYZ throughout the year and put it into your content calendar. And again, with that, your image would be your podcast logo, or it could be even be a picture of you and your guest if you've ever met in person, or just a picture of your guest or your guest book. And the audio is a clip of your guest talking. And again, you're going to add some movement on the screen and make an audiogram. And then I'm going to put number four and number five together, although I want you to think about them a little bit separately. And it's basically using audiograms to share you speaking on your podcast. So like number four could be you sharing your solo episode. So if you've, you know, you show up on your podcast, maybe you never interview guests and it's always solo episodes or you've interspersed some solo episodes episodes on your interview podcast, which I highly recommend. Um, you know, we're just we're showing up with our expertise or telling our stories and serving our listeners well. So we want to make sure we're sharing clips about that. I know we typically think about sharing our clips of our podcast guest, but being able to share your solo voice alone is great. And so like Jeff said, you know, it's a great way to get new listeners onto the on ramp to your podcast, because they want to hear your voice, the host voice. But then number five, think about doing this, use an audiogram to share you as a host, even if it's an interview that you're promoting. So the audiogram might be promoting your episode that's an interview, but the audio itself is going to be what you had to say as a host, because we often and say a lot of good things, even in conversations with our guests, you know, it's back and forth and we're talking about the topic and just, you know, you're asking some really great questions, but you're also adding to the conversation, especially if, you know, if the guest says something that makes you look good and says something about your podcast, well, you know, that's a conversation back and forth, you know, and there's just some really great things you say. So always think, even if you're sharing an episode where you have a guest, share an audio clip of you speaking as the host. Then number six, use audiograms to share your radio interviews. So often during a launch, or again, you may be getting um, radio interviews to build your audience long before you have a book in hand. But I'll often see this during a book launch. Authors get booked for radio interviews, but there's no other way to ever promote it if you miss it live. So I know one of my past clients is a traditionally published author, a New York Times bestselling author. And so she gets booked on tons and tons of media. And we always had a hard time sharing it because it was like, oh gosh, we got to pop on social media and share. I'm about to be on this interview on this radio station. I would love for you to tune in which is great if you see the post right then, right? But then once it was over, there was not ever, hardly ever a way to go back and listen to the replay. So now, you know, you could maybe ask the producer, can you record a little bit of it, even just get a little snippet or have somebody record it while you're live if you've gotten permission, because it's great exposure and builds your credibility, right? That you've gotten these radio spots. Or the other thing you could do is just basically record the audio separately, like just your voice. It's not even the interview, you know, the host asking you anything, the radio host, but it could just be your answers, which are probably a lot of the standard answers you answer anyway. So you could just record it separately, but promote it as your radio interview. And so your image would be your promo graphic for the radio station, their logo, if they give you permission, you know, your book, your headshot, anything. And then the audio would be clipped from your interview or just clip of you speaking, and of course, adding some movement on the screen. Then number seven, Jeff mentioned this, use audiograms to share your audiobook. Because remember, audiobooks are so popular now for us avid readers, we love to listen on the go. And if your audience listens to podcasts, they're likely to buy an audiobook. Ask me how I know. There's nothing like hearing your favorite author read their book themselves. So again, your image could be like a promotional graphic for the book. It could be your book cover. 
It could be a photo of you actually recording your audio book. I see that often and that's so cool, right? And the audio would be you reading a chapter or an audio book sample on there. And then of course, adding movement on your screen to make it an audiogram. Then number eight, you can use audiograms to promote your pre-order bonus. So I don't know about y'all, but I get so bored seeing the same old images over and over of pre-order bonuses, which also side note, I know those aren't as effective either anymore that it's just like a downloadable bonus. We, we usually see the images of some kind of a downloadable bonus, but no matter what your pre-order bonuses are, I would much rather hear the author share why I need this bonus and especially why I need it now versus just waiting for the book to release or waiting, you know, till the next holiday and I put it on my wish list. So the image could be the photo of you using whatever, you know, you have for your pre-order bonus or whatever you're going to have for a pre-order bonus. And then the audio would be you talking about why your readers need the bonus now or even better, how about some early readers sharing that, you know, it could be an audio of your early readers talking about how they're using the bonus. They already have a pre-order bonus and they're getting to help you promote it. And then of course, you're adding a little movement on the screen to make it an audiogram. And so you may remember back on episode 72, I shared different ways to host a podcast. And one way I mentioned was a private podcast, especially for your pre-order bonus. And so if you did something like that, it'd make creating audio for this audiogram super easy. Just saying. <laughs> then number nine, use audiograms to promote your lead magnet. I should just say ditto for number eight, because again, we want to hear why we need this freebie and what a great way to reinforce that by talking through it and hitting that felt need of why you created it in the first place. And y'all, I'm preaching to myself on this one. But you know, the image on your audiogram could be you using the freebie and the audio could be you talking about why your readers need the freebie now or even better Again, how about having your readers share that they have downloaded this freebie and how they're using it? And then again, you add a little movement on the screen to make your audiogram. Then number 10, use audiograms to share your book endorsements. So I feel like a broken record here, y'all, but we're bored of all the static images that look the same, right? So how about asking your friends for an audio endorsement? Because a lot of times, so many people are podcasters nowadays, so it'd be super easy for them to record a few sentences when they're behind the mic in just a few minutes. Or if not, they could just record an audio on their phone and get it to you. So your image could be your book. It could be the endorser holding your book. It could be a headshot of the endorser. And the audio is a clip of them reading their endorsement. And then, of course, you're adding movement on the screen. Then number 11, you can use audiograms to share book reviews. So encourage your readers to leave you an audio message. They can quickly do that on their phone and get it to you. And like during launch time, think about what did your book launch team say about the book and how can you get them to record that in audio form? And Crystal Prophet, one of my amazing podcast coaches, talked about this on episode 19 on turning your podcast into a book. And she talked about ways that she kind of kept captured all the excitement during a book launch and was able to use that in our promotional period. So I definitely recommend you listen to that episode and I'll put a link in the show notes. But again, your image could be your book. It could be a picture of um, one of your readers holding your book. Everybody loves to do that during a launch time, right? To show that they got an advanced copy of the book or, you know, show when they got it in the mailbox. And the audio could be a clip from their review of them reading their review. And if nothing else, you could read their review, but it's just like a kind of a cool way to be able to show book reviews that we don't normally see. And then again, remember you're adding movement on the screen to make it an audiogram. And don't forget, this is a marketing, like we're just going to keep doing this. We don't only do this at launch time. We want to keep remembering, you know, to share book reviews as they come in. And anytime somebody says something after they've read our book way on down the line, you want to be sure and share it with new readers. Then number 12, you could use audiograms to create a guest cast on YouTube with a playlist of your guest episodes. 
So if you haven't listened to episode 27 with Thomas Umstead Jr., I hope you will, as Thomas created the term guest cast, which is a podcast of your guest interviews. And you could do the same thing on YouTube. So you could do your image would be like a promotional image that the host gives you, or you can create your own template on Canva. And then the audio is the clip from the interview, or it could be the whole interview itself. And then, of course, you add some movement on the screen. Now, The hosts themselves may have already uploaded their episodes to YouTube, and if so, I would just add that video to your guest cast and not create anything new. Then number 13, use audiograms to give your blog readers an audio experience. So you could read some or all of your blog post. So when readers pull up your blog post to read it or they discover it through Google, they're going to discover an audio version if they prefer to listen over reading. How cool would that be? And this is a great way for you to test out if you like recording audio, if you're considering starting a podcast, which I highly recommend. The image could be the title of your blog post and the audio could be like a clip of you reading the blog post or you just talking about the topic of the post, like maybe you did an interview, a guest interview where you were on somebody's podcast and you talked about the same topic. So think of that as kind of like a little additional piece that you can add into your blog post, but they can hear it, you know, and it just complements what you have written on the screen on your post. And then of course you get to add some movement on the screen. And if you haven't listened to episode 43 with Alana Dawson, her, we, her and I chatted about turning your blog post into a podcast. So I highly recommend you check out that episode. Then number 14, use audiograms to promote your speaking events. So in episode 77, literary agent Barb Bruce had shared about your speaking platform being so vital to your book proposal. So share how you were out there speaking to your target readers today. And one of the authors I'm working with, she's pitching speaking events. So we want to show each industry that she has experienced speaking to their businesses. And so you could easily share, you know, your image can be a promotion emotional graphic for the event you're speaking at. You could use the events logo with your headshot if you have permission, or you could just, you know, do a headshot of you speaking to an audience even better, right? And then the audio can be a clip of a sample of you speaking. So hopefully it's like from an an actual event, but even if not, you could just speak it because again, these are short clips. You could just do a little speaking sample yourself and then add a little movement on the screen to make it an audiogram. So I love how Jeff talked about stepping into traffic and tying topics from your book to headlines in your audiograms. It's so good. And so think about that with all these 14 different ways you can use audiograms and be thinking about, you know, you've got this great content. Why not reuse it and share it with new readers and followers? And if there's something timely going on, then think, okay, have have I ever talked about this on the podcast? Have I talked about it on my blog? Have I talked about it at a speaking event? And then put that into an audiogram and share it. And I know it will encourage your audience. So y'all know from my interview with Jeff that his app, the Wave app is my all time favorite to use for audiograms because it's so easy. But I know many of you are already using Canva and you can create audiograms there too. use what works for best for you always. So there's so many cool ideas for using audiograms to build your audience and market your book. Which ones are you going to create? I want you to DM me on Instagram or tag me in your audiogram because I would love to see it and share it. And I'm so grateful for you tuning in. And I want to give a shout out to one of my listeners, Crystal Storms, host of the Heart Rest podcast. Crystal says, I have been binge listening to Kim's podcast and I'm loving the actionable advice and sweet encouragement she brings in every episode. Pro tip, have a handy way to take notes while you listen. Oh gosh, thanks, Crystal. And if Book Marketing Mania is helping you to build your audience and market your book, I hope you'll leave a quick review of the show to let others know it can bring them value too. So thanks for tuning in today. And as always, I'll be there for you next time to help you build your audience and market your book one podcast at a time. See you then.